If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All dogs go to heaven. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. You know, something I wanted to say to Dennis Prager during the fireside chat when his dog Otto was sleeping between us was, all dogs may go to heaven, but taxes don't. You see, the Christian purpose of taxes is to protect us from evil in a fallen world. In heaven, we won't have a fallen nature, so we won't need taxes. Now about dogs. Do dogs go to heaven? Sorry, I'm not going to answer that question today. I'm more concerned with this side of heaven. Economics. 70% of American households own a pet. Americans spent about $123.6 billion on their pets in 2021, up 19% in just the last year. Wow, a 19% increase in one year. Comparatively, giving to church and parachurch organizations is stuck around $115 billion, and it's up a paltry 1% in the last eight years, according to Christianity Today. While pet spending has more than doubled in that same period. Okay, something's going on here. Why are people spending so much on pets? First, let me be clear. I like pets. I'm merely seeking a clear biblical answer about the Christian economics of pet ownership. In recent years, Americans have spent more money buying Halloween costumes for their pets than the amount given to reach the unreached, reports Andrew Scott, president of Operation Mobilization U.S. 45% of American pet owners spend the same amount or more on their pet's health care as they do on their own health care. The Christian worldview. When God created animals, he declared their creation to be good in Genesis 1.25. At the conclusion of the creation account in Genesis 1, God looked at all he had made and he declared it very good. Humans are the crowning achievement of God's creative activity. And as his image bearers, we possess something of the divine. For more on that topic, I'll refer you to my podcast number 32, titled Made in God's Image. Humans are made above animals. When I was a child, one of my aunts traveled cross country with her small dog. I remember watching her buy a McDonald's hamburger and giving the meat to her dog. I was horrified. I mean, I still have that picture in my mind. She wasted human food on a dog, but that's common practice today. Elena Kedvani reports for the San Francisco Chronicle about a dog restaurant in her town where owners can buy a $75 tasting menu for their dogs. She writes, Dog, which opened last week with a $75 tasting menu and French-inspired pastries just for dogs, feels emblematic of everything wrong with San Francisco right now, a place where dogs are treated better than humans. <laughs> this signals the collapse, one Instagram commenter wrote. Okay, Albert Walters explains it well in his book, Creation Regained. Quote, he put the planets in their orbits makes the seasons come and go at the proper time, makes seeds grow and animals reproduce, but entrusts to mankind the tasks of making tools, doing justice, producing art, and pursuing scholarship. In other words, God's rule of law is immediate in the non-human realm, but mediate in culture and society. In the human realm, men and women become co-workers with God. As creatures made in God's image, they too have kind of a lordship over the earth. They are God's viceroys in creation. Humans can only do this because they are free to make a conscious choice. Animals can't make the choice to accept or reject God's invitation of salvation. Here's what Walters means by immediate in the non-human realm. It means animals don't have a choice. They are driven by food and reproduction. I know, B.F. Skinner says the same thing about humans, but as my wife Ginger would say, <laughs> he's all jacked up. Let's see, we are more than our environment. That's the whole theme of Man's Search for Meaning, a book by Viktor Frankl. After surviving Dachau and Auschwitz, he wrote, it is one of the basic tenets of logotherapy that man's main concern is not to gain pleasure or avoid pain, but rather to see meaning in his life. End quote. 
animals only seek pleasure or avoid pain. Humans seek meaning. Mr. Frankel continues, it becomes clear that the sort of person the prisoner became was the result of an inner decision and not the result of concentration camp influences alone. Any man can, even under such circumstances, decide what shall become of him mentally and spiritually, end quote from Viktor Frankl. Animals cannot decide what becomes of them. Theologists would point out that animals are not transcendent. Psychologists differentiate humans from animals by saying that humans are conscious or they have a conscience. Now, the Insurance Information Institute says the total number of pets insured in the U.S is now 3.9 million, a 28% increase in just the last year. The largest percentage of insured pets live in California and New York. Now, <laughs> interesting, those are the states that are losing the most population, according to my podcast, number 131, Abraham and Wealth Migration. So the Christian economist is asking the question, are pets replacing people? Pets as children, my podcast number 134 is titled, Be Fruitful and Multiply. Maybe people are having pets instead of having children. Children are messy. They disagree with you. They talk back. They don't do what they're told. It's so much better to have an obedient, playful, loyal pet who never disagrees with you, never stays out late, never misuses your credit card. <laughs> An article in an online magazine called Fortunately, says that 11% of respondents said that because of pet care, they were putting off having kids or more children. Other commonly missed milestones included delaying marriage and buying a house. Okay, just simple long-term thinking here, or what economists would call durable goods, because pets are not durable. Children are. Proverbs 127 says children are a heritage from the Lord and that offspring are a reward from him. It doesn't say that about pets. Another citation, G. Shane Morris, writing in The Federalist, opines, for many in my generation who are also approaching 30, children and the ideal prerequisite for children, marriage, are still out of the question because they're too expensive, too time consuming, and might cramp their style. Those nurturing instincts don't go anywhere though. A disturbing number of young adults are directing them towards substitutes, dogs, and cats, end quote. Morris is convinced that psychology manuals 200 years from now will identify replacement baby syndrome as a diagnosable epidemic in her generation. Uh, I won't wait for 200 years. According to the Christian economist, it is a non-biblical use of resources today. For an unbelievable number of millennials, pets' original purpose to be shaggy companions has been superseded by a role they were never biblically intended to fill, a replacement child. So terms like fur babies, yeah, might be acceptable, but people are now calling their pets children, kids, girls, boys, or sons and daughters. Okay, kids cost about $310,000 to raise. That's about $17,000 a year. Maybe pet owners are making an economic decision because the American Kennel Club reports a cost of just over $2,500 a year for raising a small dog and about $3,500 a year for a larger dog. Opportunity cost. All right, my second citation of Dennis Prager, but that's okay. His favorite ethics question is to change up the lifeboat survival question to read. If you could save only one, would it be a human stranger or your dog? He's horrified by how many people choose their dog. A quote, because I know and love my dog, end quote, is the most common apologetic. John Piper gives his economic analysis of pet ownership. If you had no pet, would that time be devoted to more refreshing, more encouraging, more edifying, more loving, more God-glorifying tasks? That is the question, says John Piper. And he's right. The time spent on pets could be spent on humans. Which would God prefer? People who spend this much time and money on their pets not only lose the economic impact that could be spent on the poor, the homeless, and other truly needy entities, the pet owner loses the ability to share his or her human life with another human. Time is an important economic concept. It's scarce. How we use it makes a difference to our fellow humans and to God. A news article, maybe 30 years ago, still rings in my head. 
A woman in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area died and left $32 million to assure the end of pet euthanasia in the Bay Area. I remember saying, that'd be about $250,000 in scholarships to each of the 120 members of the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities. That would provide one year of free Christian education for about 3,000 students. Now, simple question. Is the world better off by eliminating pet euthanasia in one county or by producing one year of Christian education for 3,000 students? The answer seems obvious. This just seems immoral to me. In the book Wide Angle, Framing Your Worldview, Rick Warren and Chuck Colson used to say that worldview is a lens. Well, the person who left $32 million to end pet euthanasia looks through a very discolored worldview lens it seems to me. The land around us in Ellis County, just south of Dallas, is developing at a rapid pace. As I drive to the university, they're building homes, warehouses, and retail establishments on both sides of the freeway. Now, some years ago, there was a news story that the pet cemetery along the road was going to be redeveloped. It wasn't. I don't know why, but I can guess there was too much pushback. You know, it had to be economic. Someone had to put up the money to preserve that pet cemetery. Dog and Cat Theology. <laughs> there really is a book by that title. The full title is Dog and Cat Theology, Rethinking Our Relationship with Our Master. I heard one of the authors speak at a session of perspectives that I attended some years ago. Here's how it works. The dog says, my master gives me everything, he must be God. While the cat says, my master gives me everything, I must be God. <laughs> if you've owned one or the other you'll see how there's quite a lot of truth in that little theology. So the question remains, who is God, you or someone else? I wrote an unpublished manuscript a few years ago titled, There is a God and you're not it. It contains about 120 meditations on various subjects. All of them end by stating, because there is a God and you're not it. Think about it. Humans are God, with a small g, over animals. We tell them what to do, we feed them, we train them. We order them around. Genesis says we are supposed to steward them. It's pretty nice to have something to order around. As Christians, we believe exactly the opposite. We allow God to order us around. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.